triple A quench into oil. 50 quench oil. Ugh. Welcome here guys, we're talking about oils used for quenching steel today. We're just starting into a new series of axes from old train rail from 1919. It's the Illinois 1919 series, just starting. So we've just got the first couple axes rolling through. We're pretty much ready to start heat treating. And I want to know for sure that we're getting a good axe out of this. So what we're going to do today is a couple different things. Got these commercial quenching oils here. These were sent to me by a company called Pritchell and Hardy. They're a blacksmithing, farrier, knife making supply store in Canada. If you're looking for some of the oils or any other supplies, check them out. I'll make sure to put the link down below of this video. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some 1919 train rail. We'll make up a couple samples and we'll run it through the AAA, the 50 and canola oil and see how that compares so that we know the best oil to use. And then also we're going to run through a temper on some samples and then the actual ax if the steel works out good to do a field test with the ax just to lock this down for sure. Now 50 quench oil has actually been around for a very long time, but it was known under a different name. It was Parks 50, and that's typically used when you have a knife. Apparently this cools at about the same rate as water would, but it's not as aggressive as uh, water, so you probably won't get as much cracking. We're gonna find out today a little bit with that. So if you're looking for some of this, you don't wanna search Parks 50s, you wanna search 50 quench oil. The second one we have here is triple A quench oil, and this is apparently a little bit slower of a quenching medium, so this would be used for bigger chunks of steel. So we're ready to put these into something. We need some kind of quenchant pail or something. Wait a second. All right, check that out. I think that'll work just dandy. But, hmm, I need another one. Let's see if I can do this again. Oh, I feel a migraine coming on. Oh, oh no, that's, that looks like a lid. Hang on a sec, that's not right. Hang on, I gotta grab some more coffee. Hang on, this works better with coffee. Okay, let's try it one more time. Ah, there we go, perfect. Nice. All right, so we got these two quenching tanks made up. They're actually a little bit wet. Okay, got those two guys ready to rock and roll. So now we're gonna get some steel in the forge and get onto that. We've already actually been working on the axis from the train rail and this is where everything's at. So these pieces here are ready to have the eye pierced into it. Those ones have the eye in it and those are roughed in there. Those are Blackhawks, these are um, Hudson Bays. You're not going to see me taking the train rail from the raw state because it's already in these chunks. So I'm going to have a couple scrap pieces that will just quickly forge into some flat sections so that we can get the samples to start testing it. Off. We're gonna let that cool off and then we'll cut that one up and also those smaller pieces I did first. All right. I just want to go over a couple things about the hardness tester because every time I do a video with it, these are the couple questions that come up. So when I first got it, which I have a video out on that, I set it up and then I actually ran through all the calibration tests on it. So it's calibrated, which is important. The second thing is, I, in that video I went through testing it on a B scale and a C scale. Those are different scales for materials that have different hardnesses. So the C scale, which is what we're gonna be using today, is only really ran between 20, to I think it was 80 Rockwell C. If you fall below that, you have to go to the B scale because the material is softer. 
So even if this material pings, it might be below 20 on the C scale. I'm not going to switch over to the B scale because we don't really care. We just want a rough, soft where it's at. Then when we get into, once it's hardened, you know, hopefully we're landed around the 50 Rockwell C. The other thing that I see some comments on is that my tester, my, uh, for the C scale, it's a diamond point on here. It's a little bit loose in here. This, there's a little ball on the side that's supposed to indent and hold that. And, and I've seen it that people are like, hey Tim, that's not going to be accurate because you're holding that in there. I don't consider that to be true because that ball is just a little indent to keep this thing in there, not to fall out. So even if you would look at it, if that was working, when the material hits, this shoulder is what contacts there, and then that's tight. So it would be essentially no different if the ball was working or not. So I don't, I don't think that that discredits my numbers. Maybe the operator does, but not that. Anyways, let's get into it here. All right, we're gonna start into our first two samples here. So I got these guys ground, cleaned up. So this is the thinner sample. I figured we should do a thin and a thick one because the quenchants cool at different rates and the ax is dynamic in that. We have a thick end and a thin end. So let's start by pinging these ones and seeing how hard they are. And then we will quench them and see where that leaves us. So these two samples here, the uh, one is an average of 21.8 Rockwell C and the other one's an average 24 Rockwell C. So what I'm going to do now is quickly go grab that thicker, juicier chunk I had. We're going to cut it, clean it up, ping that, and then once that's done we can actually get into hardening these guys. So I've pinged these two guys and they are noticeably softer than these guys. And I can buy into that because this would cool so much faster in air than this big, big chunk. And this was one chunk too, where these were each individually separate pieces. So nevertheless, the average here is 11.25 Rockwell C, which is actually off the Rockwell C chart. And that one pinged at 8.25, only did it two times because at a certain point, like we get where we're going with this. So that's our benchmark. We'll run through the Parks 50 or the 50 Quenchant. Same with this. And then we'll do these two in the AAA. So first up is going to be the AAA oil here. That's finished up here, the quenching. We're gonna head over, test them on the hardness tester. Oh, actually, before we do that, I wanna show you quickly what we're working on here. So these are all the refurbished axes here, but check this out. Got some wood, we're trying it out. So these axes here are gonna be shipping out in wood boxes. Stencils made up to make them look like old authentic axe boxes. So this refurbished axe goes in there. So this here is gonna be for the, uh, the Blackhawk hatchet. This is what it looks like when it's finished. I'll show you when we got these packaged up. This is the finished boxes with the finished axes. These four here are sold. The rest of these are not. This is the first test run of these boxes. This has been such a long time coming. I'm just so, so pumped up right now. So this is the Wetterling here. Thank you, Michael, for your support. It's gonna be shipping out next week. This is a fireman axe. Let's go into Lauren. These are the little cards I make up. Signature, thanking you for your support, which I truly means a lot to me. This is the um, Pulaski. Let's just go into Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. This is the big Black Prince. Going to Richard. Thank you so much. Look at how good that looks, guys. Oh, I'm just gonna stop and take a couple pictures because this is awesome. This is a little Sandvik that is not spoken for, so that's our smaller boxes. These are ready to go for the hatchets 
And then we also have some of those coming for the Hudson Bay, the same thing. I'm opening up pre-orders for 1919 Blackhawk hatchets and 1919 Hudson Bays. Uh, so if you want to be the first to get one of those out of the 1919 train rail, head over to my website, get your pre-order in, and then uh, we'll get you one of those. Okay, here we are getting to the crux of this video. Let's start with the uh, AAA. Going to start with the big chunk. All right, here we go. This is the first one. We're sending it. Oh yeah, 55. Screamer. Okay, check this out. This is so cool. So on the big chunk, at normalized, my average hardness was 8.25. Now hardened, my average, this is in the AAA, my average was 53 Rockwell C, which is super good. Now on my smaller chunk, the average was 24. And through here, my average is 57.2. So it's a little bit harder than the bigger chunk, which I can buy into. But that being said, that's still really close. So let's move on to now the 50 quench and see how that compares. So here we are. This is the 50 quench. On the big piece, the average is 49, Rockwell C. And on the small piece, the average is 57.6. And uh, I think you can start to see that the 50 quench is made for the thinner material, that it's a higher number than the big chunk, where the AAA was more stable between the two, I'd say. Wow, that's actually surprising how close the um, 50 quench and the AAA quench are. Look at that, 57.6 and 57.2. I guess that's pretty close too. The one thing I noticed though on the 50 quench, the small sample piece, it looked like it had warped through the quench, which is not great just from a, you know, you don't want your object or your piece to be bent up. I was able to sand it out so it didn't affect the testing. Nevertheless though, with these numbers in place, I'm going to roll with the AAA now because I feel like that's going to be more stable. It is a little bit hardly at all really like if you look at that you could run with either without any issues as far as the hardness goes i'm i'm happy with that a 57 on the edge 53 on the back is sweet so what we have to do now is we have to do a little bit of tempering and i want to see how hard it is after tempering and i'm going to temper this to about 400 degrees So now that those guys are in the oven and things are starting to look pretty good, I'm super opt optimistic that this is going to work out. I'm going to actually start working on an axe. We'll quench it now in the AAA, and then if the temper works out, we'll run it through the temper, and then test that out a little bit just to make sure that edge is good. And it just so happens, there's a whole bunch of axes that are forged right here that are from 1919 train rail. So this is going to be a Blackhawk hatchet. So let's finish grinding this guy up, and then we can run it through the heat treat. That guy's ready for heat treat now. So let's start let's see how this temper affected our hardness. So here's the numbers. Very interesting. I can say confidently that tempering at the 400 degrees for the two hours did not make the material softer. It's the same hardness. So this here is the 50 quench on the thinner piece. The average is 57.6 Rockwell C and just out of quench was 57.6. Exact same. This is the AAA on the thin one. Just the quench is 57.2. This one is higher hardness for some reason. I'm not quite sure what's going on with that. It could have been that I was pinging in different spots. It was more consistent though, but there's no way it would get harder. So that's the only one I'm like a little, oh, what's going on there? 
Nevertheless, it's still relatively speaking pretty close. Moving into the 50 quench on the big chunk, the average here is 59. The average here is 59.3. Big chunk on the AAA out of quench was 53. And here after temper, it's 53.8. So I'm super stoked with those numbers. Really good harness for an ax. You're not quite sure what's going on between the harness and the tempering, like why do you need to do the tempering? Basically what it is, is if you leave it quenched, it's so hard, it's brittle, and so it can actually crack. So these two numbers here are the thicker pieces. This is the 50 quench and this is the AAA, so 4953. And then we move over to the canola oil, the average is 32. So it's substantial, it's quite a bit softer. Then going to the thin parts, we had a 57, we had a 57, so really close. Canola oil brought us up to a 59. So what we're seeing is that the canola oil is way different versus thicker, thinner material, whereas these professional quenchants, the 50 or the AAA, there are a lot more consistent between thick or thin. Because an ax, you want it hard on the front and soft on the back, the canola oil actually was working out that that was still okay numbers because a 59 Rockwell C, that's really hard on the front. So that's really good. But uh, the professional is gonna be just a lot more stable. Bingo bango, we got an axe to sharpen. Let that cool off for a little bit. And then we can uh, sharpen that guy up. So I've just uh, burned through getting it sharp. I haven't even wire wheeled this or anything like that. It's sharp now, so we're gonna put some kind of temporary quick handle on it. Well, here's what it's going down. It's not wedged because we're burning through this thing so fast, the handle's not even finished. But I'm gonna try to test it like this because if it works out, I'd actually like to take this head off and finish it up and everything, right? So anyways, let's go see. What we really wanna know is we're actually not worried about it being hard enough this time. We're worried about it being too hard and how that would play out is if it starts to chip and whatnot. So let's see what we can do here. Now oh, check out this piece of alder here. This is softwood. Like that's a knot. Don't like Look at that, it's like one hit. And that's nice. That's crazy, Martin, how tight. People don't understand, like when you press on a handle, the way that we do it, that is no wedge in that handle, and it hasn't even moved from all that swinging I've just done like because it's such a tight fit. And then you put the wedge on top of it with pressing it in, it's just crazy. All right. Okay, well let's, uh, let's get mean. Let's go hit some rocks and see what happens with this edge. Okay, like the whole edge, just cutting rock all day long. I mean, that's gravel, okay. Use your to cut okay, big rock, right? I'll cut the rock in half. Okay, so that edge is that edge is bad, but I'm really happy with that because there's no chips. That's really important. Okay, that's that sucker's dull now. Let's go see how she does. So, like, I'm happy. I'm happy with that because the last thing you want is like a big chip to lose it. Like we've pretty much made this ax as hard as we possibly can. Okay, so I just got my hammer somewhere. So I'm I'm happy with that, no chipping. Um, 
it's really dangerous to do this because the back is hard and this is a hard steel hammer. Don't recommend it. Worst case scenario. But the axe is taking it really good. That's awesome. It looks just like the old axes we've been redoing. So there you can see the, uh, the mushrooming, which I'm really happy with. It didn't chip out or anything like that. That's an extremely hard hammer that I was using to hit that too. Here's the front edge. I can't believe that the handle, like, did it even move? It didn't even move after all that without a wedge in it. It's almost 500 PSI. 500 PSI. Yeah, but like, that's crazy. Right. Disclaimer, do not hammer on your axe. Yeah. Do, do, not chop rocks. do not do any of what we just did. So there you go. Triple A quench oil is the stuff we want to use for this 1919 train rail. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in one of the 1919 axes, so either hatchet or the Hudson Bay axe, I'm opening up pre-orders on the website right now. Make sure to tune in next week because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be finished the nasal and that video will be uploading and you wanna see this girl run. It's gonna be sweet. I look forward to seeing you in the next video and until then, keep the forge lit, hey? Over and out.